How's everybody doing? You guys ready? Alright, so first off, how did you guys like the workshops yesterday and today? So if you recall during the opening ceremony, I asked each of you guys what uh, you know the greatest weakness or greatest hurdle within our community was. I thought it was, I posited that it was the lack of leadership or the need for continuing leadership development amongst us. Do you feel that we've come at least a little bit closer? Alright, so hopefully, you know, the answer was at least a little bit, but we need to all realize that there's still a long, long ways to go. And that this event, even though we had four fantastic days together, one more to go, uh, there's still a lot more to do. And now that we've become informed, uh, built relationships with one another, there's a lot of action that needs to take place. So, I guess while I was running around all weekend, uh, I've also been charged with the task of writing up a keynote speech on leadership and given my perspective on everything. But given, I think, all the amazing speakers that we've already had come through, I'm not going to go into a spiel on kind of the tactical stuff on leadership, but I would like to share one story um, about leadership as it's pertinent to our community. And I actually took this, when I first thought of this question, uh, as many of you know, I applied to business school last year. And in it, they asked all these challenging questions. Uh, the one I got that was pretty problematic for me for a while was this. In your career, you'll have to deal with many ethical issues. What are likely to be the most challenging? So, I got this question and uh, thought about it for a long time. And actually, used my experiences from last year's conference uh, as a springboard to think about this. And I'd like to share my thoughts with you and hope you guys don't mind. If you do business now in Vietnam, you are nothing more than a communist henchman. In a community of refugees who fled their homeland for fear and hatred of communist oppression, this invective was tantamount to calling someone an agent of Satan. Moreover, these words came from my father, the chairman of the Vietnamese American community of Southern California. Yet I disagreed with him. During last year's NAPSA BIA1 conference, my father hurled these words toward a panel speaker who was highlighting the opportunity of Vietview to capitalize on Vietnam's emerging business environment. My father, like many older Vietview, harbors an intense loathing and distrust of the communist regime that stems not only from past Viet Cong atrocities, but also from the government's continuing human rights violations. As a result, Older Viet Vieu often disapprove of efforts to develop the economy because they believe doing so helps sustain the communist state. However, like younger Vietnamese and Vietnamese Americans, I've actually feared that this anti-communist fixation has precluded improvements to the well-being of Vietnam's 82 million residents. My father's proclamation at the conference reminded me of this fear, piercing me, as if he had called me a henchman as well. My stomach twisted in anxiety. I did not want to disrespect my father, nor be misbranded as a communist sympathizer. Yet I wanted to voice the dissenting perspective that I know many of us here share. Elaborating on the benefits of Viet to actually do business, the transfer of technological and managerial know-how, the potential to battle destitution, I emphasize the ability of socially conscious Vidyu to promote respect for human rights, free speech, and democracy. Vietnam is inevitably opening its doors to the global markets, and Vidyu have an opportunity to influence this transition if we as a community can only manage our seemingly all-consuming all hatred of communism. Managing this intergenerational rift will be a challenging issue ethical issue that I will face. I hope that, uh, well, so that, that story was written actually about 
six months ago, a little more than six months ago, when I had to turn in all my applications. And back at that time, uh, a lot of you were actually here in the room when my father said that. Um, and he's sitting in the back there now. Uh, both raise your hand real quick. So, we seem to have a, a difference of opinion. You know, we touched on generational gaps today. Uh, in our discussions and the need to build a community together by looking at uh, our shared experiences and having an open mind to one another. I think since that year, last July, we've come a long, long way. And I'm pleasantly surprised to say. Um, and my father and I can share a dialogue now about this and I'm less concerned, or not concerned at all actually now, about his uh, perception of me or the older community's perception of me, whether or not I choose to do something uh, in a certain manner. Because I think ultimately, if we come across a sincere individual who want to help our homeland, the ethical decisions that we come across will be very clear to us because you're making them based with a good heart. And today, I think, was actually a decent example of where uh, some of those conflicts can actually take place. You know, in the discussion this afternoon as we went through the process of selecting our next collective philanthropy project, you know, I, the thoughts of all of these things came to my mind again. You know, how do you balance between competing objectives, competing uh, priorities within the community? Things are so, there's so many causes for us to work behind. How do you choose just one? And the answer is that we each pick our own and do it to the best of our abilities and with all sincerity. The people, the resources will come to you as long as you do that. And so don't be afraid uh, to make tough decisions, I think. Um, and today, I think, we collectively went through a very difficult decision and hopefully, you know, I feel, I hope you all feel comfortable we made the right decision. In the end, passion is not enough. All of us here care enough about our community, here and in Vietnam, to make and produce change. But the passion alone is not enough. In fact, I am not enough. In fact, you, the 250 plus of us here, are not enough. When we talk about leadership and the lack of or the opportunity for leadership development in this community, we must each take back with us all the lessons that we've accumulated, not just here, but in our daily lives, and apply those to our communities uh, in our respective regions. I hope that this weekend has been valuable for you. I hope that you took something away from it uh, in heart and in mind, that you come back with the tactical skills to act out on those uh, inspiring, hopefully inspiring, uh, causes that we walk through. Finally, I hope that you all had a good time and met amazing people. And if you didn't, then that's your last chance. So party it up. Thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce to you our uh, sponsorship committee director, Eileen Pan. Give it up. How's it going? Woo! Is everyone getting full? Woo! Thank you to JC Barbecue for the food tonight. I am here to recognize those that um, provided some extra support for the conference. Um, not only did the staff come together to help put this thing on, but go to outside resources, find some sponsors to help give additional funds for the conference. And I would like to recognize Indochina Capital. They are the title sponsor for the conference. They provided us with five thousand dollars. So thank you for the last round of applause. Well, we did make a nice plaque in Indochina, and um, I want Tony to elaborate a little bit about the one-page information thing in your program. I highly recommend reading this. It's pretty important. So here's Tony. 
So uh, at the special request of the China Capital, they didn't have a representative who could actually come to make it. Uh, so they asked me to just say a couple words here, so, and I'm not going to take too much of your time. First of all, uh, they are very, very much thankful for the opportunity to come and support us here. And for those of you who don't know who Indochina Capital is, they're one of the leading investment firms actually based in Saigon, Ho Chi Minh City, and uh, are uh, investing in real estate and the equities markets over there, creating a lot of financial opportunities uh, within the environment there. In any case, uh, the only thing I would draw your attention to is for any of those of you who are curious on what it would be like to work in Vietnam or work in financial services as an intern or full-time employee, there's actually a list of job descriptions in there that they uh, wanted us to just highlight. So please, uh, again, thank you to Indochina, although they're not here, and uh, hope you guys can take a prize with that at your convenience. Uh, secondly, I would like to recognize Sin Al Quan. They provided a bus from SoCal to come up here. Who went on the bus? Raise your hand. So, um, is there a representative here from San Juan? All right, well, anyway, we'll accept it on their behalf. And also, the bus on Sunday is going to pick us up from the hotel and take you guys back down to SoCal. Um, I believe it's going to be at 4. We'll get back to you. Okay. Okay, next. Um, did you guys enjoy lunch for the past two days? I did. I would like to thank these sandwiches from the bottom of my heart for providing us with 430 sandwiches to clean all y'all.
Next is Kim Ho.
So we have good food and romantic lighting, but I feel like something's missing. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Music? It'd be really cool if we brought up a little romantic music you guys have. How about the uh, oh, music the performance? Yeah. 
And what we want to do as those who have gone before you is to provide that opportunity for you to network on a national level as each of you are coming together today because you'll recognize that each of you today, as you are students or those who have just recently graduated, five, ten years from now, you'll be in a management capacity, you will be leader of the industry, and that's what this GAD gathering uh, means and what it will be translating to in the next few years. So it's incredibly valuable that you have an opportunity to meet as many people as you can because it will really help enhance you know, what you do in sort of the, the years to come. And so, you know, Tony asked me to come and, you know, and I, he said, what do you want to talk about? And I want to be able to continue to translate just specifically what the Vietnamese American National Gal want to accomplish, particularly with the student population, or for those who are just beginning their career. What we want to do is we want to provide opportunities for as many of you as we can to continue to, to reach folks access resources, maybe financial, maybe, you know, the mentorship. If you go on our website, you know, bangusa.com or .org, you'll find the first thing we talk about is mentor our students. So every year we talk about a, a different challenge, and this year it's about mentoring a student. So for us, in translating, what God wants to do is that we have made a commitment, as we have done in the last three years, to provide opportunities for students for the last Three years we've provided 20 sort of slot for the three, four days that we do the Vietnamese American National Gala. And next year's going to be in Houston, Texas. So, so the first thing we want to be able to do is that we are going to be increasing the numbers of students that will be able to participate. So we have moved that number from 20 to 40. So I'm going to use my means of Bascon and NASA to help me in that effort. Kim, Last year, um, I had an opportunity just by our interaction in March. She was the catalyst that brought you know, all the folks together. We were able to secure uh, 20 of the folks that included uh, Tony in the process and we in the process. And so we had an opportunity to all meet uh, at Brown last year. So we want to be able to do that, use VASCON, use UNASA, and secure the students for, next, for the next year. Um, we'll start talking about the process to be able to do that. And our interest is to be able to um, get the 40 students from throughout the country, again, providing them really practical, hands-on outreach and be able to access all the folks that you basically read about or heard about, but to be really in touch with them. Secondarily, um, I want to recognize Tho Bao Gao. Bao Gao Tho, she is the student of the year. Um, as one of the most important It is an incredible thing. Because we recognize the importance of the student population, we ended up elevating the student of the year to a national level. We ended up um, recognizing um, with, along with the other five uh, national honorees uh, at the gala. So that's the other opportunity, which is we want you to begin thinking about it now as we are now getting into the nomination phase of um, for the student of the years. And as you go through this process, you'll encounter great people, some that we have not yet have known, and who may become your mentor, who, or who are your mentor already. Make those nominations, help us recognize those individuals for the contribution they make to the community. And then lastly, what Vang is doing now is then translating the recognition of the student by a scholarship. We are now working on an endowment, or have been continuing working on a scholarship endowment to continue to nurture the second generation of leadership. Uh, we ended up giving her $5,000 um, for the scholarship for next year. We want to continue to grow that. And, you know, at, a, at the very minimum, it will be $5,000, it will be ten, dollars and we'll continue to grow that in size uh, as we get the resources up. Uh, we'll be able to continue to do that. Um, I also, you know, in my final closing, that I just want to say, be involved. I, I want to make myself accessible to you. I wear many hats tonight, but um, my information is out there. The challenge to you tonight is that ask those who raise their hand who knows about that. Uh, or in any other capacity, I, will, I want to welcome each of you to email me. I'm very, very responsive in that way. Uh, I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, talk to you more about that or any other uh, endeavor that you want to talk about, uh, employment opportunities with uh, with leaf sandwiches, 
uh, or just you know general connection to people around the country. Uh, but we want to be able to do that. We want to be able to commit it in a strong, uh, firm way and make sure that we're available to be able to be accessible to, to all of you. Um, and then in my final closing, I um, have talked to Tony. We had uh, brought some t-shirts and cap. I don't know how he's going to go through that distribution, but it's here for you. Um, and I want to thank you all of you for allowing me an opportunity to just share a few comments with you. And I wish you a great evening. Thank you. There's, there's a bunch of uh, 
a little bit of stuff that I incorporated from the things that I've learned and the things that we talked about. So if you're in Coach I didn't be um, any five new ones for um, my haters up in here. And um, I'm actually nervous because this has some stuff about my mom and um, uh, the thing is when I started writing um, this
guys look at me and says, I am Korean from all the pirating Dakdabi that I eat. You are not Vietnamese just because of the things you do. It's also knowing why you do the things that you do. Because you can shave your head dressed like a monk, sit with your legs crossed and close your eyes, but it doesn't mean you'll attain enlightenment. Because it's all in here. Being Vietnamese is not about the material things. Because our mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, and uncles, grandmothers and grandmothers, rode in boats with barely anything on their backs. The only thing they had was the resilience burning in their hearts, the mindset that carried them on, the tradition that they have now passed down to us. My mother never really told me stories of where I came from. And so I would scream, I'm not Vietnamese! I now recite those words with shame as I see the image of my grandfather that I never knew fighting a war that should have never came, locked behind bars and chains because he was too proud to take off his uniform. As I see fathers and brothers lying in the battlefield, mutilated and decapitated, body set up from his head, little brother telling older sister, I'm hungry. So she said, here, have my ration instead. I am not Vietnamese. The fires blazing in the village by me. Not a dead body stacked up in the dish, machine guns and hand grenades pointing to her head. I am not Vietnamese. As they pulled him away, dragging him, he's bloody from head to toe to hang him by the post. As they rip off her clothes, doing things to her that you would never want to know. City streets flooding in fear, babies all in tears. Humanity lost in the eye of a war. I am not Vietnamese, as I see my mother escaping from imprisoned rape, traveling over to America for her children's sake, escaping flying bullets and hand grenades, thousands of lives fought to save my.
250 people who come together because they believe in the ideals of change and progressive, progressiveness and activism. And I'm looking at you guys and I'm thinking, 10 hours of sleep in a week ain't that bad. <laughs> very bad. But uh, standing up here, you know, I'm very well reminded. You know, just a little over a year ago, I was standing right there giving my graduation speech. I graduated last year from Saturday State University. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was talking to everybody, looking around, and uh, reminiscing about how uh, my first semester in college, I was, came in as a chemical engineering degree. Yes, I was a nerd. I'm waiting for another one engineers. Without you guys, I wouldn't have so. But uh, I remember, I remember uh, reminiscing, reminiscing about that. Going into my first engineering class, sitting down, opening the book, and saying, Whoa! Whoa! I'm switching pages to Polly's out. I'm a college side major. But let me tell you guys right now, what I want to reminisce about is the time that I spent in the BSA. I got involved my first year in college as a freshman. And let me tell you, I got involved, it was the weirdest thing. I was sitting at home in boxers, watching a little bit of TV, enjoying a quality meal of corn chips and peanut butter. When uh, my roommate walks in and says, put on a pair of black slacks and a white dress shirt, we're going to go take pictures. I said, why do I want to take pictures with you? <laughs> and he said, shut up, stupid, get dressed. <laughs> so we got dressed, and it turns out we weren't going to take pictures. I was walking into a VSA photo shoot. A group of people I had never met in my life, and never once really got involved with nothing. I walked in and joined in on their photo shoot for their brochure for the recruitment of them for next year. <laughs> and as much as, uh, they, I was, as much as I was confused, I'm pretty sure they were too, because I had a conversation with a friend of mine uh, who was there that day, and uh, she told me that her first impression was, why is there this Filipino guy here? <laughs> but let me tell you, we've come a long way, because that day just started this roller coaster, this folder that has gotten us to where we are today. I remember that summer, we were going to Austin Camp. Oh, uh, yes, the two OGs, God roll. <laughs> the next, next thing you know, we went to San Diego, Belinda, 2003. And then there was a group of us in Washington, D.C. for round one, the first of the round of And then NAFSA in Boston. And then NAFSA via one in Chicago. most beautiful things in my life. So that brings me to today. Let's talk about today. The theme of this conference was in common unity, building local power. Who actually recognized common unity? It's two words. Common. Something that we share. Unity. Coming together. You put those two words together, you get community. And that's what the point of this was. That we find something that we share and then we come together. Where do we 
go from here? Let me tell you where we go. We go to tomorrow. Don't be afraid to take risks, folks. I watched this great movie called Coach Carter. Who is actually who knows what Richmond is? And I don't say Virginia because that's wrong. <laughs> one, of the, one of the best quotes I've ever heard in my life was between the, the main character, Coach Carter, and one of his players. And he asked a specific question. Young man, what is your greatest fear? He does not come with an answer until the very end. And in the end, this is what he says. I don't want to read it, but it's just pretty beautiful. Our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So let's take those risks tomorrow. Let your light shine. Take what we have begun today and build on it at home. Stay in touch, especially with those who are close enough to actually meet with you. Make plans to organize a retreat, maybe an Olympic challenge, or a social event. Hey, for those of you who are so inclined, find a date. Go to each other's meetings and events and bond with each other. Start brainstorming about what you can do to support and prepare for the upcoming campaign for our collective philanthropy project. Have a barbecue, drink, eat, and be merry. Because today, if because of today is any indication, tomorrow and every day after will be a beautiful day. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for we, everybody. How many of you guys attended the uh, CPP workshop we had today? It's a pretty interesting one. No. Uh, raise your hands. I know you guys are probably all interested in uh, seeing the results, right? Yeah. So right now I want to bring the CPP committee up here and I'll let you guys know what, and what the results are. Yeah, that's 
开始。Push, uh, clear off the tables, throw away the trash, and then push everything to the back. 